All right, just about 12 minutes now before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Friday. Friday morning. Not mm-hmm. Friday noon yet, right? Nope, not uh, yet. Rick Pullen is on the phone. He is the, an award-winning investigative reporter and magazine editor, and he's got a new book. It's called The Apprentice. It is a thriller novel. And if you give me a second, if you're looking at the, uh, the podcast, I'll put the cover of the book on there right now. Let's say good morning first to Rick Pullen. Good morning, Rick. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Larry? I'm good. Where are you? Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Virginia today. How's Virginia? How's the weather? Oh, uh, awful. It's like 40 degrees. and it's, <laughs> uh, You know, it's nothing like Florida. I was in Florida last week, so I, I, I know how nice it is down there. <laughs> nice. And it's really nice today, just to rub it in a little bit. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, so tell me about the story in The Apprentice. Does it have anything to do at all with Donald Trump? Well, there's no one named Donald Trump in the book, <laughs> but uh, you might recognize a few characters if you read the book. <laughs> yes. So I, so I guess I would have to put it that way. Oh, okay. Okay. And and um, t- tell me, I guess give a thumbnail sketch of the story, maybe a movie trailer version. Sure. Uh, a young reporter uh, sort of gets thrown into a, a situation where she suddenly is uh, covering the uh, president-elect of the United States who surprisingly uh, gets the job, and he happens to be a billionaire businessman with no political experience. <laughs> and, uh, there's, yeah. Okay. And there is a murder, and she's trying to solve the murder, and who, who, is, who is responsible for the murder, and she digs deeper and deeper into the Washington labyrinth uh, trying to figure it out. Oh, and then, obviously, in the end, it, well, I won't tell you the ending, but... But you uh, actually um, uh, investigated President Trump. Many years ago, back yes. in the 80s, yes, so for campaign contribution violations. He and uh, a couple of other uh, very rich businessmen. I will say, when I contacted him, you know, and he that he had, basically he gave too much money to some political candidates back when uh, our laws were a little stricter than they are today. And he did. He contacted them and asked for a refund. So he really? did the right thing. Yeah, so, excellent. So wasn't he also giving money to Hillary Clinton back in the day? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so he was a supporter. Hmm. He's he's been a Democrat. He's been a Republican. He's all over the place. <laughs> so okay. So did you write the book with with uh, with the intent of making political commentary? No, it's it's not. It's really no political commentary. I just I looked at what's going on in the White House. I go, there's a real opportunity here for a thriller. And so you know, some of the stuff. What the interesting part is. My book really, you know, was intended to mirror what's going on in Washington, but instead it's just the opposite. What's going on in Washington is now mirroring my plot. <laughs> so it was like oh, wow. well, everything I wrote, you know, ahead of time. It's, I, mean, I mean, there's, there's uh, think about it for a minute. There's, you know, the, there's been questions uh, about the uh, president's mental health. There's uh, been questions about uh, money laundering through real estate and, and the Russian collusion and all these different things, you know, with Michael Wolf's book coming out, Fire and Fury, and, and all these things that come up. And if you read my book, if you remember the plot and everything, they're all in there. And uh, you've, you've got it from a female uh, perspective. Why did you choose the female as the protagonist and not a male character? Well, my my first book. Um, well, first first of all, my books are all about investigative reporters. You know, I'm trying to. I have a protagonist. He's not a detective. He's not a cop. He's you know. So I I wanted somebody like different, but who had the ability to investigate. So my first book that I wrote was called Naked Ambition. That involved a male, uh, sort of a, a male investigative reporter, lots of experience, all that kind of thing. So then, you know, I'm thinking about this book, you know, The Apprentice, and I'm thinking, I want somebody different. And and I thought, well, why not a young, novice female reporter? Because then you can kind of see Washington unfold through her eyes. And, you know, and she's she's a little insecure. She's she's kind of thrust into this situation that she's not comfortable with, but she does a great job. And everybody's raving about her work, and she's privately going – you know, did I do I deserve this? Have I done this right? And so it, 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 it so it makes for an interesting character. 
and it, it was it's not easy i had to i had to interview some some young women to kind of get their point of view and my daughter is one of my beta readers and she gave me her point of view and so is my wife and, and a couple other beta readers so all female because you know being a guy you got to be very careful about writing about women oh you do <laughs> I, well, plus it's just smart to, to have we don't get it all the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i would imagine that uh, so so uh the the readers that who have um given you feedback are you are you getting both ends of the spectrum from people who are uh, perceiving a, any political intent here oh sure i mean my first book same thing i mean anytime you mention washington you're going to get people uh, who yeah. you know on both sides say oh you know you hate republicans <laughs> oh you hate democrats you know right. and it, i go well if you read the book not really yeah, right. But, you know, right. the people people just, you know, always question your motives. But, you know, an author, we really we don't want to take sides, you know, and, and, and you, know, I mean, you know, I mean, one time I'll be writing about a Democrat. Next time I'll be writing about a Republican. You know, I mean, there's got to be a bad guy in there somewhere. So but I make sure everybody is. So. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm there, partisan. and there is a lot of uh, um, emotion in the book because Tish is really wanting to uh, investigate this person and really find out the truth. But then all of a sudden, she realizes that she's still young and she doesn't have all of the savvy that it takes. So she starts to doubt her own self at one point. Yep, she questions everything. So, which is. You know, most of the women I know do that. Uh, they're much more introspective than men. Men tend not to. We tend to just barge ahead, you know, whereas women kind of question things. And so that's what I was trying to do is build that into the book. So she would be sort of a real character. And, and I wonder with that observation, I wonder if we will, as, uh, as Americans, one day when we, I'm, I'm sure eventually we'll have a female president, but I wonder if that personality trait you just outlined will be part of the whole experience oh i think so i think if you look at congress right now the more women that get in there i think things will settle down a little bit we may not go to war i mean women tend to have a lot of common sense and men tend to be uh beat their chest sometimes and you know act like bullies and you have uh, uh, scenarios in there that aren't really orchestrated that all, they almost seem like their fate intervening well yeah i mean that's part of a book you know i mean but it's got to be your plot has to move along and outside events affect the characters and also what the characters do and it's all about how they interact so what what is the uh the challenge when you're when you're writing a book that you know is going to be perceived as as political commentary but you're not trying to go in that direction do you pull back sometimes so that it so that it doesn't look like it or do you just not worry about that well, the political commentary is not partisan. Uh, if you read my book, it's really about power. And power, both sides are susceptible to power. And that's really what Washington is all about. Washington is about power. Yes, absolutely. Washington yeah. is about winning. It's, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat. They want to win. They want to be in power. I mean, you look at the Democrats now, they think maybe we can win the, the midterms, you know, and we'll be in power next year. You know, and, and the Republicans are thinking, no, we only have to guard so many seats and we'll stay in power. You know, I mean, it's the, that's what everybody cares about. It's, I mean, you know, everybody complains true. about Congress not doing anything because all they care about is their own party and remaining in power. Absolutely true. And the irony is that this country was based on three simple words, we the people, and and we the people end up being co controlled by those the people, and, and we're not really adhering to that initial um, principle, that, that simple principle that we would govern ourselves. Well, that's, that's called gerrymandering. And gerrymandering is having our representatives pick the voters instead of the voters picking the representatives. Hmm. And you also do have the Russians in the book. Yeah. Different yep. scenarios. Yep. Yeah, that was interesting on there. Um, I have a copy of the... And a lot of those things are kind of true. I mean, if, you, if you've been reading the headlines, you go, oh, I remember reading that in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. so yeah. There's a lot of, lot of different things in the book that are 
come true. Well, it is interesting how uh, novelists, fiction, fiction novelists, will, will often see uh, ahead into the future. In your case, it's not 100 years into the future. It's just a, a, a year, maybe a couple of years. I don't know when you wrote the book. Um, the book is called The Apprentice. It's a thriller. It's written by Rick Pullen, and I have a copy of it if you would like it. The rest of us have to go buy it. I did find it on Amazon. Rick, do you want to address us to a web, uh, direct us, I should say, to a website? Well, sure. You can always visit rickpullen.com. Uh, That's my website. Uh, but, yeah, the quickest way is just to go to Amazon or call your local bookstore to order it. Okay, very good. Uh, Rick, thank you for being on the air with us today. Thank you very much. Appreciate you're, it. You're welcome. We will be right back. Greetings, good citizens. Join me, Robin Hood, at the 32nd Annual Hogtown Medieval Fair, January 27th and 28th, and February 2nd, 3rd, and 4th at the Alacho County Fairgrounds. Join the colorful cast of characters on the streets of Hogtown where you'll find medieval merriment for the whole family. Cheer on jousting nights, watch a living chess match, or enjoy performances by gypsy dancers and magicians. Then wander through the marketplace where hundreds of artisans sell their medieval wares. Come one, come all, to the Hogtown Medieval Fair, funded in part by Visit Gainesville Alacho. County. This is James Snyder inviting you to join me each Sunday morning at 9.30 for Sunday Joy on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. News Radio. I'm Chris Foster. America is the place to do business. President Trump's on his way back to Washington now after meeting.